Absolutely. I think my testimony is a little bit unique for everybody in the group. I mean, most people were, were saved and Christians before getting involved with the ministry and they kind of got equipped to share their faith and make a difference. For me, I think my story is a is an example of why S2S needs to exist because I was one that was led to Christ through the biblical teaching that we, we practice here at S2S and we use to equip others. Amen. So I, I was led to Christ about two years ago. Um, so yeah, I think my story is, is very similar to a lot of people in this area. I mean, I was what, what we would consider a false conversion. And if you listen to the podcast long enough, you'll get to hear what that means. Basically, I had a false sense of security growing up. Mm. You know, I mean, I I was in church every Sunday. I was baptized when I was young. Um, But naturally, I fell away when I was a teenager because I had no foundation. Right, I wasn't saved. I didn't have any idea what the gospel was. I had no knowledge of Jesus. Um, So there was nothing keeping me in Christ or in in church. So I fell away. Um, And like so many other people, you know, flash forward 10 years, I'm an adult. I've got a beautiful wife kids great job everything's going great thankfully we're healthy everything's good and i get back into church and i feel like i'm like i'm pleasing god you know i had this false sense of security from a from a child and now i'm involved in church and i'm like living this good christian life right i mean i'm going to church every sunday i'm in a small group so let me let me ask you why why did y'all you, you guys you know weren't going to church and then you're an adult and a family at this point and you say you know what you ended up going to church. What was the motivation for you yeah, guys so, just I mean, to show up at a church? Yeah, so I mean, both of us, my wife and myself, grew up going to church on just attending on Sundays. I mean, our families were, you know, have Christian backgrounds, so they drug us to church. But neither one of us, my wife or myself, we weren't saved. We didn't know what the gospel was, so naturally we didn't believe in the gospel. We didn't have faith in what Christ did because we didn't. It wasn't relevant to us. Right. Um, and then just having kids, I think that was a, a draw for us. We wanted to have our kids involved in church like we were. You know, we thought we were saved. Um, so that's what got us involved back in the church. Gotcha. Um, we gotcha. had some life events that, that drew us to church. And, you know, we got there and spent, you know, two or three years, you know, trying to live a good Christian life ultimately is what we were doing. I mean, we thought we were pleasing God by attending church. I mean, I was a usher, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I was I was actually doing more than probably 90% of the people in church. So I'm like, man, God's got to be happy with me, right? I mean, I'm even singing like in worship, like words are coming out of my mouth, you know, doing something that's uncomfortable for me. Uh Um, Yeah, so uh, my life was great. I was happy. And then you actually ruined it all for me. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Yeah, yeah, you you ruined it. So um, just one Saturday morning, you took me out to the coffee and just just asked to hear my testimony. I mean, we we didn't really know each other that well at the time, but... I'm pretty sure like two minutes in, you knew that I was a false conversion. I mean, my story was just totally void of Christ, void of, you know, his blood atonement, his substitution for us, no godly remorse or sorrow, no sin, anything like that. And you basically just kind of showed me the S2S teachings, you know, showed me the YouTube channel, um, shared the gospel very lightly, knowing that I was going to go look into it. Man, I spent like that whole day, I remember I probably watched 20, 25 YouTube videos of just the biblical gospel over and over again, just witness encounters. Mm. And just hearing the full gospel for the first time, like the full, well-articulated biblical gospel, the way it's supposed to be, to me, it was the first time that sin was made relevant to me. Wow. Like I never understood that God had a standard. And I think we, especially me, have a problem with comparing myself to other people. So we always look at somebody else and say, well, I'm not that bad. Right. You know, I'm not like Hitler. Or I'm not like, you know, Joe in church that's, you know, going out and lying and stealing and doing all this stuff. I haven't robbed a bank. So, you know, God's not going to condemn both of us. I'm better than him. So, wow. you know, so that it, that's a, that's a, it unknowingly you were self-righteous in your, in oh, your totally. thought and I think that's I think that's human nature. That's everybody. Yeah. Right. But but understanding that God has a standard and I'm nowhere near that. You look at the Ten Commandments and I mean, I'm nailed. I, I didn't pass any of them. Right. And the hardest thing for me was. It was about a two week period of kind of deconstructing and wrestling with this because I always thought that, you know, I was in God's favor, like God, God's happy with me, but I stood condemned and I deserved it. Mm. And that's the hardest thing to, to kind of get through. And um, yeah, it was a couple of weeks where I was wrestling with it. And then ultimately, um, you see how bad you are, but then you see the goodness of God. You know, Romans 2, Paul says it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance mm. and understanding that even though I'm, you know, stained with sin, that God still loves me. And he demonstrated it 2000 years ago. And I've just been too blind to even recognize it, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so I ended up putting my faith in the gospel over the, there was a specific night where I remember I was like, man, this, I'm foolish not to, 
that is my only hope. Man, yeah. it was it was understanding the law of God that drove me to understand that I needed a savior. It wasn't about happiness. I mean, I was perfectly happy going to church and doing my thing and, you know, living a pretty happy life. It's not about happiness. It's about righteousness. Mm. And so that's what's changed for me. My, the quality of my life is no different. I'm still happy, but I've got joy knowing that my salvation is not dependent upon what I do. It's depending on what Christ already did. Yes. You know, we have an advocate. What more could we want? You know, right. he, he appeased the wrath of God in our place. Yes. And he's advocating for us right now. Yes. You know, mm. and the comfort of that really has compelled me to be involved in this ministry. I mean, I was number one, I was saved directly through the ministry. And this is just a an outlet to where I can do something. I'm, I'm compelled to do something because of, I realize how much he loves me and what he did for mm. me. And now I can go eat help equip others because I know there's a lot more people like me that are just sitting in the pews waiting to hear the gospel and we're intentional about it right right and then number two we've got Christians who have been Christians for a while but we don't know how to give a reason for the hope that we have so what do you think happens when you die what's on the other side uh, I believe that you're just you're just watching people below that is what you're putting your hope in and that's what Jesus is he is our parachute when are you gonna put your trust in it when now, S2S.TV, Seek to Save Ministries, the function, number one is to reach the lost. That's our function. We're going to do it.